Hello. Well, today I want to talk about <clears throat> uh, the new movie uh, from the franchise. I've already covered all the films up until this point. Um, and that is Scream 5. Um, yeah, I'm not calling it Scream because it is not a remake. <clears throat> or really a proper reboot, even though it's interesting. This is like trying to reboot or be like a reboot. And yet the fourth film was already like that because that film was making fun of uh, like reboots and remakes of that time. And uh, while more has happened uh, like within the horror genre and just overall uh, the industry, um, still it's kind of interesting and oddly went that way. Uh, or that route with this, but, um, there will be some spoilers, um, though I will not at all, um, spoil, um, certain things like who the killer is, you know, I, I've done that before, but, um, and why I could definitely obviously do that now, <clears throat> and the thought occurred to me that perhaps some have yet to actually watch this movie, because, you know, now it's around Halloween time, you know, people are watching horror movies, so perhaps some have either gotten the film or they've got a streaming service, like I believe Paramount Plus. This is on because Paramount. Um, and they, um, <coughs> you know, they're uh, just put it off just because they, you know, wanted to wait till the kind of like Halloween season to just sort of get into this. Uh, which I can understand and I can get. Um, I saw this in the theater and I actually thought about um, talking about it then, but I thought, you know what, I'll just wait until actually uh, around Halloween time. And the main reason is because I have fairly mixed feelings about this film. Um, and some months ago, I actually um, wrote a comment regarding the film and what I thought about it. And I have actually taken those com that comment and basically uh, compiled it and uh, a little bit organized it to some extent to sort of like like paragraphs and such. So it's a little more organized than the, a, a typical YouTube comment would be. Um, that way I can at least uh, give certain reasons as to why I feel this way. Um, of course, I'm not going to spoil every single thing, but there are certain plot points I will talk about. So if you have not seen this movie, um, I will say when the spoiler stuff will happen, um, which will probably be very soon. But yeah, overall, I'm mixed, you know, on this. Um, you know, the, the, the lowest uh, score for this franchise I've given... At this point, it was Scream 3. I gave it like 3 out of 5 stars or 7 out of 10. This is like um, 2.5 stars, 5 out of 10. There are things about this film that I think, you know, um, I see what it's doing. I get why at certain points it does what it's doing. Or what it's doing what it does. Or, you know, you know what I mean. But there's just something... Missing, and I will get into that because I have it written down here. Uh, but there is, you know, something about just the way it's made. Certain decisions that I don't think needed to be made. I get why they were made, but even then when you look at those reasons, I don't know if that was really the right choice. That's just me. I will get into what I mean by that. So again, if you do not agree, that is fine. But yeah, Scream 5 for me is very eh. You know, I've seen it since the theater, obviously. Got the film. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a... It, it's, I, ha I am just fairly mixed. And I apologize for when I do discuss various stuff. But stuff I'm gonna look at my computer here uh, that way I can 
be a little more organized. That way I'm not just going all over the place, having to go exactly from memory with the certain things I definitely want to talk about, because then I, I could go uh, off in different directions, and I want to at least be sure to stay on topic with something like this. So I think it is good that I have some notes here, as opposed to being a film that I will just, you know, you uh, just generally praise. You know, but those stuff, that's kind of stuff, the films that I generally talk about, you know, uh, pretty much positive, you know, that's fine. You know, I'm able to talk about all the stuff I enjoy, you know, with or without spoilers, you know, depending on how old the film is. And uh, again, there could be some people who haven't seen this film. So this is just my general take on it um, within the first five or six minutes. So there you go. Uh, that is my overall thoughts. Scream 5 is... Eh, not horrible. I do not think it is horrible, but I would put put it last in the Scream franchise. If you know we're gonna count one through five, five would be the bottom, and uh, Scream one would be at the very top. Scream four would then follow for me, and then Scream two would be in the middle, then Scream three and five. That is my own ranking. You can disagree. You can agree or have similar thoughts, but have maybe changed the order for whatever reason. Um, I do not think it is the best from the, since the first film. Um, yeah. But now I'm going to get into all that right now, uh, within the spoiler stuff. So turn it off now if you do not at all want to be spoiled. Alrighty, here we go. Um... So yeah, I'm you know in this comment, you know, uh, uh, I do say that some of the attacks were like well done, like very interesting and unique. You know, at the very beginning, um, uh, the, the first attack was fairly brutal in the sense of how like you know the, the leg was broken and just how you know just vicious it was done. You know, and especially since. You know, a person actually for the first time is not killed. You know, like a Tara Carpenter. And, you know, and, uh, um, yeah. names of the characters on the back, unfortunately, but yeah, I believe that was the name. You know, she's attacked, and she's, uh, doesn't die, which is obviously a first. People pretty much die in every Scream film at the very beginning. We all know the most famous is clearly, you know, Drew Barrymore. Um, obviously, she's not the very first to die, but most people think so, because everybody forgets about the character's boyfriend, Steve. Uh, though, of course, chronologically, you know, it would be Maureen Prescott who was killed first. Um, but we don't know about that at this point. Uh, in the film, in the original film, at the, at the beginning, we don't know about that. Um, but this is the first time uh, that, you know, the cycle is broken and somebody is killed at the beginning. Or is not killed at the beginning. Um, which I think is actually pretty good. I like that. And... Um, yeah, Tara has a sister, and, you know, she goes back to town of Woodsboro to talk to her and everything, and, you know, and, you know, Tara's not happy because, you know, she left, and for just various reasons, but, well, that, long and the short of it, finds out that her sister's uh, father, biological father, you know, is uh, Billy Loomis, who, you know, ch cheated on Sydney in high school. And her mother, their mother was um, was already dating somebody, but then they t the two of them got married when they found out she was pregnant. And so, yeah, and then she found out who her real father was, and then yeah, and throughout the film you, you see uh, Skeet Ulrich, you know, you know he's um, you know they've de-aged him and people have talked about how he it looks weird how he's de-aged because he doesn't look exactly like he did in the original film um Skeet Ulrich does look quite well 
pretty good though for his age. You know, he has aged well. Um, you know, he's kept it, kept a. <clears throat> yeah, you know, he has taken care of himself, which is good. Um, I always like when actors and actresses, uh, you know, they take care of themselves as they get older. It's very good. And, I, and Nev Campbell, she definitely has taken care of herself. You know, she's in her fifties and she looks incredible. Um, David Arquette looks pretty good. You know, for you know, he of course has some gray like in his beard and size, but you know that's pretty natural as people get older they gray. Um, but he he does he's uh, looks good. Courtney Cox looks all right, though I know she has had some work done for whatever reason. I don't think she really needed any kind of work done. She looked fine, you know. Um, she looked fine in Scream 4, which was uh, 11 years before this film, you know. But she was aging pretty well. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah, you know, we find out and then Billy Loomis is like a spirit to her, uh, to her sister. And, yeah, and she sees him and he's like a guide, like a positive influence, which is kind of contradictory to what we all know of Billy Loomis to be in Scream 1. You know, he's like a sociopath or psychopath, whatever. Uh, I always say those two because I, it seems like those two, uh, the words of the, the, those two words, the meaning has now switched. Like what a sociopath used to mean is now a psychopath and vice versa. It's odd. Things keep changing in terms of terms, what means what. So there you go. Uh, psychopathic sociopath well that actually that could fit billy loomis so uh you know whatever um regardless he he was very into you know killing of course he had his friend Stu matthew lillard and he, who he is he is in this too but he's you just hear his voice there's a moment they have like various stab films and we see like a uh, like somebody in a ghost face mask which is like metal and there's a flamethrower you know, and, and there's a line he says like oh like tubular or something like along those lines i forget for the moment what he exactly he says but you can clearly hear it's matthew lillard i right? like well, that's funny um and jamie kennedy and uh, henry winkler at the end of the party going on uh you know you hear their voices and of course they were in the original film Jimmy Kennedy was in the first three, you know, as Randy. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, um, that's the overall sort of gist, you know, more killings going on, people getting killed, trying to figure out who it is and what the reason is and all that. Um, so, um, Anyway, with um, some of the stuff I have uh, big uh, complaints about, you know, is um, the fact that in the film it's revealed that Dewey and Gail are divorced. You know, now, and, you know, they uh, have it to where it was all Dewey who was the reason behind it. Um, like, after, like, a couple months or so, you know, be, living in New York because you know, Gail had to do her own show in New York. Um, like he just, I guess we can conclude he wasn't happy with how this was going and he just, you know, left her, which kind of contradicts the fact that, you know, throughout the franchise, he was the one who was keeping them together. You know, she always put her job in front of the, the relationship they had or, you know, if they sort of had one or could have had one or whatever was going on at that point in time, depending on the film, you know, he was the one trying to pursue it and trying to, once they had it, trying to, you know, grab a hold of it and keep it intact because he loved her. And, you know, he knows she loves him, even though, you know, perhaps her ego or whatever just won't at times acknowledge that that is the case. He, he's trying to, you know, keep their uh, relationship 
uh, intact and doing what he can. And I could see the logic of this where, um, you know, perhaps because, you know, it seems like Woodsboro was fairly a fairly small town, not ex super small, you know, because in the film, first film we see, you know, and everything of just how kind of wide <laughs> spread like how there's how there's a little town and then there's people who live out like along the countryside and there's <clears throat> not always a whole lot of houses near and so you know it's sort of like a small town kind of thing their jurisdiction is fairly wide so like it's a big place yet also small at the same time like people don't always live within the city but they live like some live on the outskirts or whatever um but yeah the, it, it just seems like you know he would keep their relationship going you know he would do whatever he could and um i could see perhaps um as i've written here that um you know he pretty much comes from a small town and she always basically wanted to go and do more and i could see there'd be some tension to come from the two of them where Dewey is overwhelmed being in New York it's a pretty big city I know he was in um you know like Los Angeles or Hollywood in the in the third film you know there's a lot of hustle and bustle there um <clears throat> but of course you know that is also pretty close to home so you know if he decided he didn't want to be part of that scene anymore he could just drive pretty easily like a few hours or so back to Woodsboro and there you go he'd, he'd be all right whereas he'd have to fly back to Woodsboro because that's in California <clears throat> obviously and um you know uh, <clears throat> that that's um that is something that I was not fond of how you know we because we also don't really get too many scenes with him there's like like one scene of them together where they interact and i think that's unfortunate that's me um <clears throat> but yeah I, I i wish that there was more that we could explain or there was some explanation and in the film and the deleted scenes <clears throat> uh sorry the deleted scenes that are on the like the blu-ray and such um no explanation is given so it's like she just kind of you know uh it's like alrighty that sucks dang um you know and considering you know the real life relationship of David Arquette and Courtney Cox getting divorced because it was around the time Scream 4 was being made they had problems and then after it was released, they got divorced. I can understand them wanting to sort of mirror that, but I don't know. I liked it better when they were together. There's just something about their dynamic that I really liked. Um, uh, I think it could have been tackled differently. Maybe, again, like discussed with uh, Gail and Dewey them having more scenes together and they're just um you know mentioning what happened you know you don't need to have like a full-on 10 minute scene between them or they're talking about all this but just like you know a little exchange just so we can the audience has a better understanding and a better clue what kind of exactly happened that would make sense for dewey to leave gail because i can see Gail leaving Dewey, you know, even though she loves him, you know, but, you know, in past films, like, she, she wants to, you know, elevate her career. She wants to get the big story and all that stuff. So I could see her being the one to leave Dewey. Dewey leaving Gail doesn't make too much sense. You really have to use your imagination in order to uh, make it make sense based on what we know of the characters. And I could with my whole thought of him being from a fairly small town compared to New York City, I could see that being a reason, you know, but that is never given in the film, so that's unfortunate, um, for me at least. Um, 
and um we find out he isn't the sheriff in the fourth film he was the sheriff but in the in this film he says that they kind of like made him retire no explanation is given i don't know why it, it just is you know uh that's just his it's just he, he he's just left you know it, uh you know, they, or they just have him leave. Yeah, he does. Um, you know, I, I wish he was the sheriff, but okay. Um, cause, um, I, I really... I, I really wished he was uh, just with the law, enforce, law enforcement. You know, he, he, he really grew as a character throughout these films, and just to see him kind of relegate to some guy who was kind of like eh and w it was reluctant to help when news of these uh of a new attack and they were killings were going on i don't know i just didn't wasn't fond of it it just people have compared him to how han solo or luke skywalker were uh, characterized in the you know in the disney trilogy um i see their points you know but I don't know. I, I I've never really gone that that way, but I can see why people have. Um, but I just, you know, I just was again. I just wasn't fond of how the character of Dewey was handled in the film. Just not. Um, and then, of course, um, big spoiler here. Uh, if you're still watching this and you haven't switched off until you've seen it to then watch the rest at this point they killed Dewey and I did not like that I know a lot of people have praised this and thought it was really necessary because you know it was bold they needed to do something to shock the audience you know you gotta shock the audience in a horror film like this it's gone on for five films with the three main characters being in all of them at this point gotta kill off one of them you know he gets the best of ghost face at a point you know he stuns them shoots them and uh you know of all the original characters he would have definitely been the one to know for a fact to shoot them in the head because he has been hurt more in vital areas than uh, Sydney and Gale. Not that the two of them have never been put in danger. I don't mean to imply that at all. But between the three of them, Dewey has been stabbed and uh, hit and beaten many times. And I think for him, he definitely would know to, you know, shoot the killer in the head even if he has to reload you know they're they're stunned for a while you know even if you know they're not knocked out which i don't believe they were but obviously because of how long it takes from you know uh, him getting to an elevator to tear away and everything and then him going back to go to kill Ghostface by shooting him in the head before he's you know killed uh and stabbed because he got distracted when his phone rang. Or, yeah. I just... I just was not fond of it. In the theater, I wasn't fond of it. And at home, when watching it, I wasn't fond of it. I just thought, what a waste of a great character. Because as the film was going on, they were making Dewey really good. You know, like, sort of like the old Dewey we saw. You know, kind of, you know, maybe bumbling here or there. But, you know, still fairly heroic as he was throughout the films. So, yeah, he's taken a lot of abuse. And the fact that he doesn't kill the killer at the moment when they're down and vulnerable is, just seemed out of character for me. Um... I think Sydney should have had more screen time. Um, 
Same with Gale. Would have been great if all three of them were in a scene together. I get why they didn't have her sitting in it more. You know, she's trying to stay away and have a life and looks like she has a baby, so great for her. Um, but, you know, of course she does come back at the end, especially when, you know, there's a party going on at Stu Mocker's house, Matthew Lillard. Um, of course, it's not his house anymore, but, you know, it's the one of the new characters, the parents have that home. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just... Yeah, oh, the Billy's daughter is Sam. I broke that down, and I don't know why I was looking around, but I... Bleh. I guess I want to just get all that stuff out of the way, and that old Tara. So, yeah. Um, so here, you know, the new characters aren't all that interesting. For the kind of char type of characters they are, Sam and Tara are okay. They're all right, whatever. You know, they're... Nothing special. You know, kind of sort of stereotypical of characters in this kind of film I thought I mean you know and I don't blame the actresses but the characters they were given weren't that interesting it's not their fault I think it comes down to the writing as well as the direction and the same with for all the people playing the other characters in the film I did not think all of them were fantastic they're all very eh or blah I think Wes had the most potential for being a, a fairly interesting character. He seemed to be, you know, fairly harmless and also sort of like Randy to an extent, though. We see Randy's niece and nephew, and uh, his niece is uh, uh, like the like the big film buff of the of the group, and I don't know, she wasn't all that interesting to me. Uh, I don't know. It's just, just that's just me. I didn't find her all that uh, fantastic. And again, that's nothing that's slight against the actress. It's just the material she was given. Same with the actor playing her brother. You know, that's the thing. I think many of these people in the film, uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of stuff outside of. There's like somebody from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in this. She was fine in that film and. The role she has here is fine. Um, I just, you know, wished that there there was better material is the thing. That's the big thing. You know, they didn't have a lot of bit, uh, great material. A lot of these people could pro are may be uh, better in other stuff. I just have not seen them in other things yet. They're fairly new to me. Um, um, yeah. Um, um, but, you know, you know, the whole thing with, uh, Wes was just, I don't know, I think that was just a waste of, honestly, could have had cool development, but just, just a waste. You know, and Skeet Ulrich, Ulrich, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> he's a very good actor, and I didn't like to see him again, you know, it's been a while since I've probably seen him in anything really major that people are talking about um though i don't know if it was completely necessary to really have his character here i mean you know i mean i understand that the, the idea of sam being billy's daughter and that playing into the film i think was an interesting idea but i don't think they we needed to necessarily see him in the flesh or spirit in that room maybe like at most maybe have his voice in her head and um, maybe some footage from the original film, you know, and uh, you know, like Billy from the original, Sydney, uh, Vigil and um, <clears throat> you know, Sydney meets, you know, Sam in the film, and then um, that could perhaps then prompt a flashback where, if, you know, in the original film with them. You know, at the water fountain and they're eating grapes and everything. You know, I think that would have been cool. Just a little moment like that. Just a little flashback, you know. 
archive footage. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Something like that I think would have worked fine. If you wanted to have Skeelorge's voice, that would have been all right. But, yeah. Um, like, like a scene like that when they were talking about Casey and Steve's murder. Um, and, again, I know for the new film they want to do things to shock and surprise people and keep them on their toes. And anyone can die. I think the way they handled a main character's demise... It didn't have more screen time with the other two. It did cheapen it for me, personally. Um, I'm not sure, again, what I'd rate it, though I think I've pretty much been determined what I have at this point. Uh, 5 out of 10, 2.5 out of 5. You know, I said that earlier, obviously, in the, the beginning of this, but I really do think, as I've gone through this again, and, of course, having rewatched it, and sort of preparing, looking through this, and seeing if there's anything I need, I'd add or take away um, that I want to mention. I do think that's a very solid rating I would get, depending on out of five or out of ten. I think that's a <clears throat> for me. I think that is fairly reasonable. There's some good ideas in here, but the execution of those ideas aren't all that great. Um, you know the the. I'm I'm fairly mixed on this, as you can tell. The closest film at the series before this I was mixed on was Scream 3, but I, I, I've i been able to excuse that due to the change of plans with that film, of what the original plot and intention was, and some of the circumstances around that, which I've already talked about in the third uh, Scream film. You know, that you know, they... You know the way they originally intended it to be and what it ended up being i can excuse it for it that film being the way that it is um and it's not a bad film could have been better but it's not bad um you know the whole columbine uh tragedy happening which prompted them to then of course shift gears and change things um, you know, if they would go the route of, like, Halloween has been doing, uh, where the newest installments are the, are the only ones that matter, and then a bunch of them, or in this case, perhaps this one is ignored, you know, maybe I could see that happening, but like, it doesn't seem like that's happening from everything I've heard, it seems like Scream 6 will happen, and, um, yeah, just, you know, like, but, you know, if they did decide to just scrap whatever they have in mind for Scream 6, and like, we're making Scream 5, yeah, like, we're going to ignore this, um, but because of the reaction of this film being fairly positive, I don't think that will happen, I think they will go ahead with Scream 6, but if they didn't, if they decided we were going to just say this doesn't exist, all that exists is one through four, and this next one is stream five. Then okay, I could possibly see that, but that doesn't seem likely, just because of how uh, well it's been received. Um, and yes, I will say that you know if they did, but if they did do that, then maybe they could do more justice to these uh, original characters and get some new interesting characters. Uh, to carry the franchise on if the new if the old actors and actresses don't want to continue to come back <clears throat> you know and all right but i will say you know i think uh, kevin williamson does need to come back i i think that uh he'd be able to get it back on track you know even if it was slowly done i think it would be uh, a good thing um, because, you know, it's, you know, he, he knows the, these characters, and I know that he didn't write Scream 3, and that was part of also the reason I wasn't as fond of Scream 3 as the others, but considering, you know, the plans originally and why they couldn't do that, I, I get it. And Scream 3, for what it is, is actually fairly good. So, you know, I can't be upset about all that. 
Um, but, you know, uh, this is a film that shows what happens when Kevin Williamson is not the writer and Wes Craven is not the director. Of course, Wes Craven could not direct this film because he passed away in 2015. But if you had Kevin Williamson doing the script, I think that would have at least been pretty good. Because even with Scream 3, without the words of Kevin Williamson on a script, you had Wes Craven, who was heading the ship as the director. And here, at least, you'd have Kevin Williamson heading the ship in the term in the screenwriting sense so whoever would be in the director's chair would at least you know be able to carry on the torch from Wes Craven you know and continuing to keep this series alive um yeah you know uh <clears throat> this film is just meh. Nothing, um, yeah, nothing ex excellent or exciting for me. Some interesting ideas, some alright moments here and there, but overall, very meh. Yeah. Acting is fine for what it is, music is fine. Um,. The look of the film is fine. I do think, though, that the writing and, I guess, even the direction could have been improved. It could have been better. Um, some pretty good ideas, but, you know, it is what it is. And there you go. Um, yeah, this is a... This is... A, yeah. Not terrible... But not great or good, in my opinion. It was, eh. And that's it. That's really all I've got to say. Um, this was longer than I thought it was going to be, but I, I do think, though, at least it's pretty good for me to at least get all my thoughts out like this. So, And again, apologies for just at, at times looking at the screen or reading, but I wanted to make sure for this, because of my mixed feelings, I was able to properly articulate what I was talking about you know I hope that this is um uh, this was interesting at least and you know until the whatever the next film will be you know I have now talked about every film in the Scream franchise now so there's that another franchise is done on my channel so yeah if you've seen this film what have you thought what did you think about it if you haven't, you interested in it, even if you watched all the way to the end of this. And yeah, what do you think about Scream as a whole? Uh, enjoy it, dislike it? Yeah, let me know. And uh, yeah, I hope um, all of you, all of you are doing well. Hope all of you are having a great day. Hope you're all having an excellent weekend, and we'll have a great week. And I hope your week was also good. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to talk more about horror films, uh, this month, so, if you're not fond of horror, I understand if you don't, you know, uh, watch all of my videos this month, but if you have watched all the way through the end, I thank you, and I will definitely see you all next time. Bye.